I'm Shiroi, and I'm back. I'll be going over some tips and some techniques you can start using to help improve your Gabriel gameplay. First, let's talk about modules and what I personally use and why. For the attack module, I highly recommend you use the Large Energy Bank instead of Penetrating Blast. Why? The most obvious reason is that more shots are far more beneficial for your damage output than extra damage against shields. Penetrating Blast is completely useless once your opponent's shield is down, offering you no real benefit afterwards. I could talk more about why I recommend against using the Penetrating Blast, but then the video wouldn't get done. Penetrating Blast is good against mecha with a lot of shields such as Neutron Star, or someone who's using the Gravity Amplifier Pilot ability, which turns 5-10% to of your mecha durability into shield. For the defense module, I recommend you use the Blind Warp instead of Energy Tag. Why? Blind Warp essentially increases your health by 15-25% to due to the 25 damage reduction for 5 seconds, which makes a big difference while in a pinch, or if you're making an aggressive push. Energy Tag isn't quite as useful due to the fact that you should be trying to predict where your enemies are going to go if you cannot see them. However, if you don't trust yourself in knowing how your enemy will maneuver, you can use Energy Tag, but you should always be pushing yourself to learn the habits of your opponents to improve your future self. For Propulsion, I recommend Rapid Charging instead of Hyper Warp. Some of the reasons behind this is you're going to be running into more situations where you may want to have a full charge or half charge for extra damage. Gabriel's teleportation already goes 90 meters by default, so the extra 30 at best isn't the biggest difference, but can make a minor impact. Hyperwarp is good in a flat arena, but there isn't a lot of flat space in a lot of engagement areas or team deathmatch maps, aside from extreme sports ground. I forgot to record this part, but talking about Core Module 1 or 2, Core Module 1 is good for that 12% damage increase on your full charge, which is good for the playstyle that likes hard scoping, or generally getting a good beefy shot for their first shot. Core Module 2 is for people that like to do more damage in close range engagements, as it does add around 50 or 70 damage to each shot. So generally speaking, I prefer Core Module 1 because it is more versatile and you'll get into more engagements with it than you would with Core Module 2. But both of them are good. Let's talk about tech builds. I would highly recommend running Hyper Fire, Ranged Attack, and Sniper Round for your attack tech. They give a 4.5% increase to long range damage altogether. In terms of defense tech, personally, I like to run Impact Armor, Self Healing, and the defense tech. However, the defense setup I have, I personally wouldn't recommend running. Instead, I'd say to try to build towards shield and long range damage reduction. Let's go over some pilot abilities. Fatal Verdict actually isn't as good for Gabriel and Team Deathmatch without his Judgment module but is more viable in Battle Royale, which is where Tactical Terminals help accelerate Fatal Verdict and Judgment. For Team Deathmatch, I would recommend Gravity Amplifier, as it helps a lot when countering another Gabriel or Snow Mirage, while also increasing your maximum regeneratable health. For Battle Royale, I would recommend both Fatal Verdict and Gravity Amplifier. It comes down to preference in the end, and I've always preferred Gravity Amplifier over Fatal Verdict, as Fatal Verdict alone cannot make a large impact on your damage. Now let's go over some quick things regarding Gabriel's attacks. Did you know Gabriel's AP Energy Cannon goes through opponents? Yes? No? Well, it can also damage and penetrate Doomlight's Photon Shield, hitting anyone behind it. Gabriel's AP Energy Cannon and Sniper Cannon both have an AoE, which is reduced in damage the further a pilot is from the impact, but stays relatively the same if they are in a mecha. An enemy mecha cannot be headshot if there is an active shield, however if you get a headshot with the Sniper Cannon against a mecha who has a little bit of shield, you will get a critical damage bonus for anything that wasn't absorbed by the shield. 
Let's go over movement. Just like any mecha, you can jump and shoot. Combine this with your sniper cannon and AP cannon to deal damage while also being evasive. There's nothing easier to hit than a Gabriel who only strafes left and right or stands still. Teleportation is good to get to the high ground, teleport around an enemy, or to get behind cover. Mix both of these and you will get the hang of positioning yourself as well as being agile during combat. Positionally, you'll want to pick a spot that helps support your team while also trying to think of an escape route if worst comes to worst. That way you can make a quick escape if you cannot stay to fight the battle. Aim is very important, but especially important with sniper mecha. I play a lot of shooters on a lower sensitivity with not a lot of mousepad space. Find a comfortable sensitivity for you and your mousepad space. For example, my sensitivity settings are 2% for unscoped and the rifle, and the rest are at 1%. Specifically for Gabriel, I use 8% for swipe screen and 18% for scope sensitivity. If you try to lower your sensitivity, it will feel like lifting weights at first, you will miss a lot, but if you give it a week or two, eventually you will start to get more consistent with small adjustments to your aim. Try tracking the moving targets inside the training grounds, or try jumping around while keeping the head of a mecha at the center of your crosshair. If you keep aiming ahead of your target while doing this, try lowering your sensitivity and train with it a little to see if it improves. If you keep aiming behind your target, try raising your sensitivity instead. Additionally, you can try flicking to a target while also having a place to put your crosshair after you take a shot. That way, you reset your aim and generally improve your ability to flick and snap to your targets. Just try to do it as fast as you can and as accurate as you can, starting off slow and then slowly getting faster. Nobody is perfect and you will miss a few shots, so don't give up if you keep missing. The more you miss, the more your brain will correct your mistakes, slowly making you a lot more accurate and consistent. While on the topic of aim and sensitivity, let's talk about jump shots. Jump shots are when you jump and shoot at the same time. It's important to have a sensitivity you are comfortable with and can track well with, as you will need to adjust your aim while you jump. The best way to think about it is, if your target is standing still and you jump straight up, all you have to do is aim down at the same speed of your jump, then aim up at the speed of your descent. If you jump right, aim down to the left, then as you descend, aim up to the left. In a Gabe duel, you may have to occasionally mix up when you jump and when you don't, as jumping repeatedly might be predictable. However, most of the time you can just keep jumping and you'll be fine. In the event you notice a Gabriel taking advantage of your jump pattern, try to mix up the timing between your jumps very slightly. Let's go over some close quarters and medium range options. For the sake of simplicity, I will be calling the AP energy cannon the normal attack. You can shoot your normal attack, quickly scope in, shoot, and immediately unscope and do a normal attack immediately afterwards. This technique has a few names, however I don't call it anything. It's up to you to adopt the name or come up with one yourself in this case. The purpose of it is to significantly increase your DPS in close range engagements, and combining it with jumping is extremely important, as it makes you just as deadly close range as you are at long range. I advise practicing it in the training ground and trying to get consistent at it. Let's talk about my favorite and game changing skill, Pop Shots. I don't know if there's a name for it that isn't Pop Shot, but I've always called it that. Pop Shots are when you down a pilot as they eject, whom of which just got their mecha destroyed either by you or someone else. It is a very effective way to come back from an unwinnable situation, removing an enemy in Battle Royale or two total points from the mecha destroy and pilot kill combined. I've personally had multiple buzzer beaters from a pop shot in team deathmatch and comebacks in squads. How do you do pop shots? There isn't an easy way to teach pop shotting, as it is something that you learn through gameplay more than just looking it up. 
the best way to start learning and getting more consistent at it is by pre-aiming the area you think the pilot will be at the apex of their ejection and taking a shot after that. Eventually, you will get familiar with ejection heights, however ejection heights are different based on the mode you are playing. In team deathmatch modes, the ejection height is significantly reduced compared to Battle Royale. In Battle Royale, there is the Swift Chameleon Terminal, which gives you 20% ejection velocity. Additionally, Yutong's pilot ability increases the ejection height when ejecting from a destroyed mecha by 30% of upwards to 50%, while also increasing gliding speed. There's a few other Gabriel techniques out there, such as this one. I've known about it for around two years, but it is way too inconsistent to be reliable. You have to scope and unscope really quickly and shoot, then shoot your normal attack and repeat. It is much like the other Gabriel technique, but is more mechanically challenging than the more optimized shoot, scope, shoot, unscope, repeat. One of the main issues is that it moves your crosshair around too much, and the general upsides of more screen visibility are less important than it may seem. And it does not increase your fire rate for either weapon, as they both have a set fire rate and you cannot shoot them faster than what it is. I have seen some videos about this technique popping up over the past year, so if you want you can go hunt those down, but I could only find them in Chinese and don't have the links. Anyone who knows a link to a video for those interested in this specific technique, you can feel free to share it in the comments. With all of that being said, thank you for watching. The purpose of this video was to help those who want to learn Gabriel, as well as give others general insight to how Gabriel works. If you found this video helpful to you, feel free to give it a like and maybe share it to someone who might be interested in this type of topic. If you like these guides, go ahead and subscribe. I'll be working on more of them as the time goes on, and we'll be covering various other mecha and pilots as well. See ya!